And now your host, real estate broker, consultant, and best-selling author, Todd Tremonti. Whoa, the crowd goes wild. <laughs> Great intro. Full price Courtney, producer Courtney with a new intro. So proud of it. Might have spit out her yogurt just then. Y'all, we got a good show for you today. DFW Real Estate Weekly. We're bringing back a friend of the show. Our first ever, no, not our first ever. Our second ever producer, Mason. The man, the myth, the legend. The young MG will be on the show shortly. We're going to call him just here in a minute. But we also have lots to talk about. Uh, I think it's dumb when people overuse the term dream home. You know, let me help you find your dream home. Well, not everybody's moving into the dream home, but we are going to talk today about some dream home scenarios, like check all the boxes, get everything you want, get a combination of things that people often think is impossible. We're going to get into that. And my version of that, which is your dream house on your dream lot in your dream location. My version of that sounds impossible. Custom home, you and your family on a really big lot, but still in town, still in the city. Can you do that? We're going to get into that. All sorts of other state of the market questions. We got all sorts of good stuff coming up for you. If you ever miss the show, make sure you catch the podcast, DFW Real Estate Weekly, any place you listen to podcasts. And of course, you can catch all the videos and everything else online at touchreminderteam.com or find us on YouTube, but you can link to it from touchreminderteam.com. All right. If you have questions, call or text 214 310 0008. 214 310 zero 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 eight call or text anytime if we're live on air we'll chat if we're not we'll still chat just won't be on the radio but we can help you anytime t143100008 uh coming up on the show all sorts of information about homes on land about this time of year about market conditions about media messaging and all sorts of other things but for now it's the moment many of you have been waiting for for Nine months since producer Mason, the young MG, left us to go start his family farm on what? A home on some land. And uh, we're going to call him right now. I really hope he picks up or this is going to be awkward. Be there. Pigs got out. Hello. There he is. He answered. What's up? <laughs> the young MG, he's back. Full price, Courtney. I'm so excited. The audience is excited. You're excited. I'm excited. Are you excited, Mason? Oh, I'm. I'm just ecstatic. God, thanks for having me, ladies and gentlemen. Our second ever producer. The show even had a different name back then, Courtney. Second ever producer of this very show, the Young MG producer extraordinaire, Mason Goss, no longer with us, but with us in spirit reporting live from his home on land and the farm. Are we allowed to call it the farm? What are you calling it these days? Uh, yeah, we can call it the farm. I think uh, I'm no longer producer Mason. I think I go by farmer Mason these days. Farmer Mason. <laughs> Maybe rancher would even be a legal terminology. Yeah, I think a lot of people in Texas All right. like that term. Real quick, for our listeners and friends and neighbors that don't know who Mason is, for years and years and years, Mason was on our team. He was the producer of the show and the YouTube channel. Uh, Full Price Courtney has filled uh, many parts of that role, and, and the roles evolved a little bit. Uh, but you you heard the soothing tones of Mason Goss on the show here for years. Now he and his delightful wife went through the if – you're, if you're a longtime listener, you know the story. They did a two-year flip. They sold their home. They cashed out. They went to the country. They bought a place. Um, uh, they've built – home at least for now now they're putting together infrastructure and building the the what do we want to call it the house the, the farm dream. the, the, the dream. yeah the environment <laughs> of their dream so i was making fun of in the intro that it drives me crazy when other people overuse the term dream home but mm -hmm. we're going to spend a lot of time on today's show about your dream home my dream home and how people really can, if they're at that stage of life or that they have clarity around their dream, they can achieve that and we can help them here at the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team. So real quick, get us caught up in like one or two minutes 
what you've been up to since you left Richardson. Man, uh, there's a lot. We got a 70-acre property out here in East Texas in the Piney Woods. And, uh, man, we're just trying to farm as much as we can. We've got cows and pigs and ducks and chickens and all sorts of stuff. And we're only trying to grow it. But um, one thing we did want when we came out here was a slower pace of life. And, man, do we have it. (laughs) (laughs) Things go a lot slower than you expect on the farm. So while we do have a lot going on, um, you just got to, you know, come to the come to grips with the fact that things just move slowly. And uh, so we are trying to get that going, get all those animals, all the infrastructure, like you said. We're in the process of building a yurt. If anyone knows what that is, that's a, a small structure that'll be my, my, my temporary home. Right now we live in a workshop uh, with, my, with my in-laws and my two-year-old, and I'm about to have another baby in about four weeks. What? So it's, it's, it's wild. It is a little, but, uh, a we little bit joking, going on. Uh, a lot, a lot, and we were joking last night. Thought about uh, we we watched an episode of The Office where they had the the warehouse team had won the lottery, and we all had joked about okay, well, what what would we do if we won the lottery? And and honestly, we we just thought we we're exactly where we wanted want to be. We don't we wouldn't want to go anywhere. We don't we wouldn't want to sell our property where we really are just living out our dream. Um, and it's all thanks to. I think some heavy lifting from the Todd Schmani home selling team was helping us cash out and do the two year flip, um, as well as help my in-laws sell their house. Uh, y'all helped us do that and, uh, we wouldn't be here without you guys. So um, I, I didn't do any of the remodel on that house. So I'll, we'll take the marketing <laughs> and negotiation credit maybe, but we didn't do the work. Y'all did all that. And it sounds like you're doing a ton of work out there. Now I demand that you shamelessly plug uh, your YouTube channel and your website for the farm. And we'll, we'll circle back later on more deep ways people can engage and do business with y'all. But real quick, just tell people how they can kind of follow what you're doing. Some, some folks that are listening, know you remember you others might be interested in farming or homesteading or more of a recreational kind of ranchette house on some land or any version of what you're doing. If they just want to keep an eye on you or, or know how to, be in contact how can they do that right you can go to sunnywillowfarms.com that's our website and right now it'll just send you to a a little newsletter sign up so if you want to get any email updates about what we're doing we're trying to send an email um, probably once a month at this point but we'll probably ramp it up as things are starting to get going we are uh, you can find our youtube channel at the same name if you just search sunny willow farms it's got a bunch of videos on how we're, how we're doing all the stuff we're doing, what, you know, what's going on with our water system, what's going on with our cows and our ducks and just all sorts of fun stuff. And we're trying to post there. And, um, if you're, if y'all remember, uh, that's what I did on the Taj Money home selling team. So I took some of those skills and have been documenting everything we're doing, our story and all that stuff. Um, yeah, you'll find us on Instagram too, if you want to find that. And if, we can talk about this later, like you said, but we're also selling at a farmer's market in Tyler, and we're also taking orders from our Dallas friends because we still have plenty of connections there. Yeah, so Sunny Willow Farms, plural, wherever you're looking, mm-hmm. and they're back in town in Dallas, and that's, at least for now, part of the future business model is to be able to provide um, organically raised, super, super healthy. I'll let you talk more about that, but meats and potentially in the future, some sort of crops and things like that. So uh, we've had some Sunny Willow Farms chicken been delightful um and there's all sorts of other stuff coming so um without going so far down the rabbit hole of tons of specific details on breeds and things like that long term what is your plan that folks that can hear us right now might be able to participate in or benefit from that they may be looking for yeah uh well the whole reason we moved out here and did this whole thing was because we wanted to raise food that our family wanted to eat. And we're tired of um, a lot of the COVID and the, the 2021 snow apocalypse with a lot of the grocery stores running out of stock. And we just wanted to be able to provide food for our own family. And we got a lot of feedback that people also wanted that for their families too. 
Um, and we wanted to make sure that we raise animals right. We're not raising thousands of chickens in a small confined house that you'll, that'll never see the light of day and that are getting charged up with all sorts of goop. Um, and we wanted to raise them clean, fresh air, fresh sunlight, and pretty much do that for every kind of, uh, enterprise, every kind of animal enterprise. So, um, we think it reflects well in the quality and, and the health of what we're selling. So right now we're selling pasture raised chicken, like you said, um, as well as we just sent three of our, our, our piggies to the butcher and, uh, we'll have some forest raised pork coming up here, um, in the next couple weeks. And we're, our, uh, we've got a bunch of chickens. Yeah. Delicious pork chops. And we got a bunch of chickens and ducks that are, that we've raised, uh, from chicks that, uh, chicks and ducklings that we'll be laying. So we'll have eggs galore coming out of our ears soon. Um, and all that super high quality, um, just raised in the way that God designs those animals, um, and not factory, <laughs> not in a factory or in a, in a, uh, assembly line type environment. Mason, I got bad news, man. My freezer <laughs> went out this week and Ooh. I lost thousands of dollars of venison <laughs> and delicious meats. So you got to grow this stuff faster. I need, I need stock. <laughs> All right, That's folks. Brutal. So some, some point in the not too distant future, you'll be able to go to sunnywillowfarms.com and purchase, you know, phenomenally, healthily, carefully raised animals and meats and eggs and all these things. Yes, they are in East Texas, but they are working on distribution and delivery. They're doing it, but that will develop as the farm develops here for at least the Dallas side of the Metroplex and maybe beyond. And I've even told him once he gets his cattle stuff going on, you know, I'm, we want halves or whole cows and, you know, uh, the ability to know exactly where our food came from and all that good stuff. So let's let's change gears for a little bit and talk about outside of the business and the production of farm life, what it's like to have a home, and that's evolving, on land. What's that lifestyle-wise looking like, feeling like for you yourself, for your family? What do you see in the future? We have a lot of listeners and friends, obviously, that love living on land or aspire to live on land because that's one of our specialties. That's what a lot of us here really love. So what has that been like or, or what dreams are you dreaming on that front? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I'm, I'm of the opinion that I, I believe it's natural for people to have a piece of land to steward that is their own. Uh, I think that happened with uh, Adam and Eve in the garden for going a little biblical. And um, uh, the God gave them a land to subdue and take care of. And I really believe that that's kind of something that we all innately uh, should do in some form or capacity, whether that's on your, you know, quarter of an acre in the suburban land or uh, 70 acres like we have on Sunny Willow Farms. But yeah, I, I just, I love the, the ability to get up, work hard with my hands, enjoy the, the outdoor, maybe not the heat, this time of year, but what? most of the time, Has it been hot? good, uh, good weather. Um, and just enjoy a slower pace, just hard work that's fulfilling. And, and just, you can see the product of you taking care of something, steward, stewarding something. Um, that's just on, on a big, really, really cool scale. Yeah. So whether you're into homesteading or you just want room to play or you like want to workshop or fishing or hunting or any, whatever degree of land and space and utility of that space is. Uh, if you're thinking about owning home, owning a home or building a home on land, give us a call. That is absolutely one of the areas we're thrilled and fired up and uh, have a deeper dive level of expertise on than, than nearly anyone in our market. So go to TodTremontyTeam.com, click any button, fill out any form, call any phone number, text us 214-310-0008, Google my name, however the heck you want to get in touch with us. And let's talk about your version of what Mason's doing. Maybe you don't want to go quite that far out. Maybe you don't want quite that much land. Maybe you want more. Um, you know, my version of that story was crazy. We're actually working on a long form video that we'll do soon just of kind of my personal journey in real estate and, and homes and land and all those things. Um, I started, like Mason said, on about a quarter of an acre in Richardson. Uh, my mother-in-law gave me a gardening book and that 
in so many ways was a good thing in other ways has created a problem uh, and the problem was i wanted more space more land the side yard garden filled up and then most of the yard filled up i now drive by my old house and envy the maturity of the fruit trees that i planted there over a decade ago and then we moved out to more land so where we could have you know dozens of fruit trees and gardens and room for the animals that i'm currently raising are children and there are three of them and <laughs> they use that space pretty well but and then the journey of being able to buy a legitimately cruddy older home and remodel that and now tear that down and do something new and all of that so wherever you find yourself in that story uh, more similar to mine or more similar to Mason, or you have a creative goal of your own, we want to be a part of that. We want to help uh, educate you, guide you, lead you, advocate for you, or just be a part of you achieving that dream and that goal. So head over to the website, toddtremonteteam.com. You can never start that process too early, but sadly, most people start the process too late. So they either don't achieve the dream or they put themselves in a situation where they have limited options or they're forced to act with urgency. So if you're thinking about buying or selling any home in DFW, especially a home on land or uh, a home in a desirable neighborhood, go to toddtremonteteam.com or just Google Todd Tremonti and we can get connected with you there. So what, what, are, what, what are some of the fun recreational things your crew is getting to do because you have space right now? Uh, man, well, we have a, about a one acre pond that I, has a few fish in it. So I've loved going to get, going to, uh, go fishing, teach, teach my daughter how to fish, you know, whatever that looks like at two years old. <laughs> um, I love just being able to walk our property and just see the beauty, um, and just enjoy what do nature. You have, bluegill in the pond? Bass? I think there's a few bass in there. Yeah. Okay. A few bass in there. And, uh, yeah, just enjoy being outside, being outdoors. I love uh, getting around the fire um, and just enjoying the the fresh air. Uh, and Are you it's, playing it's a with lot that sawmill? Oh, well, of course. Of course we're playing with the sawmill. For some people, we, that we're might not to... sound like fun because <laughs> it's work, but it gives you the ability in a fun way to create, to build almost whatever you want. So yeah. to me, that's it gives fun. you a lot of flexibility. Um, it is it is kind of amazing to take a, a tree on your property and turn it into something that you can build with, almost like people used to do. Almost yeah. like that. So so, what's <laughs> something you've done that with? What's something you have gone out, cut down a tree, dried it out, cut it up into boards, and built something with? Uh, we we've been in a need for some pig shelters. So I built little houses for my pigs. Doesn't yeah. take much. Not difficult to do. Um, we've had to build a chicken transport crate to throw in the back of our pickup truck. You know, whenever we're taking chickens to the butcher, you got to be able to transport them somehow. Um, so yeah, it just, it's versatile, made a lot of posts with it. You know, it, it, it just can do anything. And it's, um, it's been a lot of fun to see just the transformation and the utility and all that that goes with it. Sweet, sweet. I like it. I like it a lot. So when you think about investment, this is going to sound really vague. When you think about investment or wealth building in the traditional sense, most people, their home is a big part of that, right? So, you know, I bought a house, I'm hoping to either pay it off or keep my payment low. And I hope the value goes up and someday I can do something with it. With your land, obviously you have enough land that your your home is a smaller percentage of the value of the total package because you have so much land. Right. As far as an investment, what how do you feel? What do you think about? You can go anywhere you want with this, but as far as what you're doing to the value of it, what's well? Go ahead. I think it's it's no secret that uh, land in Texas has only gone up in value um, over the years. So I think just the the ability for us to even buy it when we did and just to be able to hold on to it, I think is a huge blessing. Um, I thank God every day for that. And then I, I long term, I'm thinking, uh, you know, 100 years from now, 500 years from now, what what is it going to look like that my daughter's grandchildren are going to be able to own a piece of land? I, I want to keep it in the family, ideally. And, and that's my heart for this property is not only, we, we, we mentioned a lot, that it's not only going to bless uh, our current 
you know, situation, but it's going to bless past, present and future generations. And I think that's our hope for it. And I think that's our long-term investment strategy is to be able to have a place that my kids, my grandkids, my great grandkids can have um, as their own. Yeah. I figured you weren't going to go financial there because you have no intention of selling <laughs> it, but when you, and you know, and I just to summarize, cause I know context, you guys are making every effort to improve the fertility of the land, the soil, you guys are planting, you're growing, you're building infrastructure, you're building homes on it. So from a pure financial perspective, you're adding a ton of value and the cumulative value is significantly more than the cost of each of the parts. But then more importantly to you and, and the legacy you want to leave is the lifestyle value, is the uh, impact in the world value of quality products, uh, uh, a healthy quality lifestyle and the ability to love, serve, minister, enjoy the space and the impact of that with others. All right. So, um, we're going to ask you to hang out longer if you can, uh, and we'll dig okay, into, right. we'll dig into a bunch more. Uh, we've got, we've got a lot coming, uh, in the show. So hang with us folks. I'm going to talk a little bit more as we get in. We have, we have a bunch of questions that have come in this week off of some other content that we've created. Uh, and I've spilled the beans recently on what I've been up to personally. Uh, I've begun to share a little bit about why I've been reluctant to publicly share some of the real estate dealings I've had lately. And, uh, we're going to do that a little bit later in the show. So stay with us. You'll get to see Todd uh, in a rare moment of uh, hesitation communicate why I've been reluctant to share some of what I've been doing and why recently I have begun to do that and why uh, what the response to that has been. But I think it will be of value to many, many, many of you listening uh, who have big ideas, big goals, big dreams, maybe right now don't see a path between where you are and where you want to be with your home, with your property the one you currently have or, or one that you would like to have in the future. So we'll talk about that. We'll continue to reference the value of homes on land, but also construction, location, uh, being able to achieve something that currently feels impossible or that others have had a hard time achieving. We're going to dig into all of that as we make our way through the show. We'll also talk a little bit more about what is the current state of the market and where some of the opportunities lie. And of course, you can send us your questions, 214 310 Zero 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 eight. Uh, that is DFW Real Estate Weekly. Uh, if you miss us here or if you missed any part of the show, check out the podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts. DFW Real Estate Weekly with Todd Tremani, a really long name, so it's easy to find when you go search it. DFW Real Estate Weekly with Todd Tremani. Um, we're going to be talking really a lot between now and the end of the year into how seasonality plays into the market and why the so-called summer market is winding down, but the fall market has actually been going for a while and it is a great time to buy and sell property, whether it be on land, in the neighborhood, on a golf course, or wherever you'd like to be. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after traffic and weather with more DFW Real Estate with Todd Tremonti, and we will get into my story and why I've been hiding it from you for so long. Welcome back. Welcome back, party people. Thanks for hanging with us through the break. We still have with us the man, the myth, the legend, the young MG, Mason Goss, former producer, forever friend, client, achiever of dreams, living out on land with animals and family, doing the thing that he once dreamt and now is making happen. And, and many of us have dreams in our head, in our heart, in a journal somewhere that we've never told anyone uh, that we really, really feel drawn to achieve. And so we've got Mason hanging out with us for the whole show today, talking about the, the dream that he has and is achieving with his wife, with the kiddos, with the in-laws, with the farm. But what's your version of that? What, what are you wanting uh, not just from a materialistic standpoint, but what do you want to create for yourself and your family related to your home or that your home has an impact on? Do you want that place of refuge? Do you want a bunch of land and space to roam? Do you want the pool? Do you want the sauna? Do you want the amazing kitchen? What is it about home for you? Because I'm a big believer that home is a critical 
element to being who we are and who we were meant to be in the world. Where do you cultivate your gifts, escape the difficulties of life, rest, recover, recreate, and do those things? What are your dreams related to your home? Now, I said earlier at the top of the show that even I get annoyed when people overuse the term dream home, dream home, dream home. We don't always live in our dream home. Many of us build up to that. And I've been building up to mine for 40 something years now, but my wife and I together have been building up to that for almost 20 years. And realistically, we have been on the same lot and incrementally building our way towards our dream scenario for almost exactly 10 years now. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that as we make our way through the, the remaining part of the show today. And we're just going to have an open conversation with full price Courtney, producer Courtney, the young MG, former producer Mason, and I'll give you some bits and pieces of what, what I've got going on. So there's a radio teaser. We'll get into it in a minute. But this segment is brought to you by Patrick Glaros and his team over at Cardinal Financial for all of your mortgage needs. Um, I have... Uh, many, many others of our team members, clients, and friends have used Patrick for all of our mortgage needs. I'm currently using him for two different mortgage needs. So go to patrickglaros.com. That's G-L-A-R-O-S. They'll get you scored away on a loan, on a refinance, on what's really, truly happening in the mortgage loan market right now. That's Patrick Glaros, G-L-A-R-O-S, patrickglaros.com, and MLS number 30880. Four. We are live, live, live from the Keen Landscaping Studios. We're going to check in with Mason on the farm. All right, Mason, when I talk about a dream scenario, when did you, and I'm not going to say anyone in your family's name unless you want to, when did you and your family start this dream that you're now actively achieving? Um, well, it's funny how you, how you develop dreams because I think some to – some people looking outside in, they can look at it and think it's a uh, something that happens really quickly when it's a long process of step over here, step over here, kind of door opening, uh, things going right this way, things going wrong the other way. Um, so I think when we we formally made a plan to start a farm, I think kind of centered around January 2021, um, okay. but it, it slowly started to take shape after that. Um, but I think we had always kind of dreamed to have some sort of land uh, in our future and what felt like a 10 year off goal ended up happening a lot sooner because of what happened with our two year flip and, and everything that went along with that uh, in your listeners. Know. So bits and pieces coming together, whatever we'll call it over a lifetime and then really, really culminating into a firm idea. And then within a year or two, at least the beginning of that purchase of land, sure. move to land, basic housing, kind of stage two of housing in the works. Who knows what stage on farm development you're on 10 of an infinite number. <laughs> um, but I mean, that's exciting. If you're, if you're listening right now and you're like, you know, I've got a dream a year or two from now, I could be thick in it. Right. My yeah. story is more of kind of a 10 year version. And we are going to get to that here in a minute. But producer Courtney has got things that we have got to do, y'all. So <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's not working. I don't know what's happening with I that. Think it's of the phone. I don't know I'm if it is, it. <laughs> but she's just going <laughs> to echo from the background. Um, all right. So we had questions this week on. It's funny. They almost preempted this show. Uh, not knowing the topic of the show, but basically like, okay, lately we've been putting out some content and people have been responding to it. Like, great. Awesome. I would also like to build my dream, but what are the steps? If I want to build a home on land in the city, for example, which is something we've been talking about lately, because that's what I'm doing. If I want my dream home on land, but also in the city, in town, you know, near school work, all those things. What does that process even look like? So one of the initial questions was, what does the land acquisition land acquisition piece of that look like? How do I buy land? How, how do I do that, right? So specific to my scenario, I had the benefit of time, but do not put off what I'm about to say because you currently think the market's tough. The market's always tough. It's always easier to look back, but 
I bought acreage property in town near the city for under $200,000. And that makes people mad right now. But what I bought was a pretty funky little house. So if you're connected with me on social media, go check it out. I've posted about it just recently. If you're following our YouTube channel, give us a few weeks and we're going to have a pretty significant developed one. There's a short piece that's come out really recently. But we bought a two bed, two bath, what was originally 1600 square feet house that it wasn't like inhabitable. All due respect to the previous owner. It was a bachelor guy. Didn't really care a whole lot about how things looked. Just, it was just a place for him to live. So we had piles of cinder blocks and rebar and just garbage out on the land. And the house was, let's just say, not maintained to the level that most families would want to live in. For example, my daughter laid down on the ground while we were looking at it and my wife freaked out. Get up off, don't touch that. So it was funky. But we had a vision, much like Mason, of what it could be, me more than her, uh, after many, many conversations of what it could be, we bought it. Uh, with what budget we had at the time, we remodeled it. Over the next eight or nine years, we would touch up and fix and touch up and fix. We had some problems there that were somewhat unsolvable and unavoidable, but we lived an incredible, fantastic, happy eight or nine years in the home in that remodeled state. We added gardens, we added a uh, pool, we added greenhouse, we added ponds, we added basketball court recreational areas for the kids, we rebuilt driveway, we planted hundreds of trees, we put in irrigation, we put in lighting. Little by little by little, the dream kept taking form, taking form. And we loved to host, we loved to entertain, so we shared it with as many people as possible. I had two people come over for another round of remodels. Both of them said to me, Todd, Stop putting money into this property. Stop putting money into this house. That turned into, well, we would never tear it down. So what do we do to, well, what would it take to tear it down? Well, would we, are we crazy? Let's pray. Let's talk to wise counsel. Let's pray some more. Let's talk to other wise counsel to feeling convicted that we do want to host more. We do want to share and steward this more. So we tore that bad boy down in July. In February, we started building again, and we're somewhere in the home stretch now of being finished with our, here it comes, dream home on land in the city. Within 20 minutes of sports and entertainment and shopping and kids' schools and my office and all the things. So that's the million mile an hour version of my story, my version of having the dream. Now, the longer version, check out the YouTube channel is the night my wife and I got engaged, I told her, I do not want to live in a normal house on a normal lot. We went to high school together. So I referenced an area in our town that we grew up in that was a lot like where we live. Like that vision started 20 plus years ago and has taken shape over that time. So you can do that too. If you're dreaming of that and you want to achieve that, Call or text us. Let's have that conversation together. No pressure, no commitment. We could get it done in six weeks, six years, whatever you need. 214-310-0008. That's 214-310-0008 or online like my son says. Touchmoneyteam.com. And um, if that feels impossible to you right now, call us anyway. Text us anyway. Email us. Let's just start. We'll point you towards some resources. You can check out YouTube videos. You can read our books. Uh, and you can hear from people like Mason that have had that dream that have gone out and made it happen. And maybe your dream isn't on land, but we want to be a part of you getting to achieve those dreams. So what were, what were some of the steps in your process, Mason, of going from a two year flip buy remodel, live in it for two years, generate tax-free profit. What were some of the steps along the way that, felt difficult, but you guys were able to achieve one at a time to get you where you are. Man. Uh, well, <clears throat> once you flip it, you have to sell it. So that was a big step in the process. That was, um, we were unsure about the direction, um, where we went from there. We had, lo we had lovely Jeremy Payne on the Touch Money, uh, home selling team help us out. And he got us more than we'd ever thought we would ever get for this little house. 
um, in Richardson. That, that you and, bought during a pandemic at a time where people were terrified to buy or sell mm-hmm. or do anything, right? So, oh yeah, the uh, guy we the guy we kind of skipped in line. One of the buyers backed out. Um, we we put in a backup offer with the expertise of David Goss on the team, uh, and that ended up getting a. Yeah, he backed out because he was unsure about the pandemic and the direction financially of where he was going next. And so, um, really opened that door and, uh, man, like I said, we, we bought at the beginning of the pandemic sold at the height, I want to say of the pandemic price increases where they're, you know, where they were just not so, uh, people are, you know, selling their mortgaging their house, selling their their cars and doing everything they can to get a house. Buyers are fighting tooth and nail and Jeremy Payne just knocked it out of the park. Um, so that was a big step. Um, that kind of set us up to say, okay, we have this amount of money. We can do this with a piece of land. We can, you know, take this step forward and we can start kind of planning. All right, this is what we, what we can afford is what we can't and where we need to cut back and where we need to um, invest. And so, yeah, that was, that was a huge step. I think after that, we um, we had to find a piece of land, um, which was tricky. We had a, a, a certain piece of land in mind. We wanted a lot of forest because we had wanted to ra- raise a lot of pigs in the forest in their natural habitat. So we were kind of looking for a unique piece of land where we could have forest for pigs and pastures for cows and chickens and really just uh, it, it was a help from David Goss once again, stepping up and helping us find the perfect piece of land. and. Um, that happened, we closed about a year ago on that piece of land. Um, and since we were there, we built a workshop on it. We're in the process of building a barn. You talked about some of the houses we're trying to build on it. Um, it, when you, the, when you look back and think, oh man, that's how much we've gotten done in a year. It, it's amazing. Um, and it, 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 it just has blown by. Yeah. It's, so it's well, by, yeah. I think on that note for, for, anybody that we're talking to sometimes these things feel decades away right you know we would love to have a five bedroom home with room for all the kids but can we even get it done by the time before they leave us you know the the that process will remain indefinite until you start the conversation until you start to put the ducks in a row until you start to get answers to your questions until you start to understand the financial costs and ramifications and we are eager to begin that conversation with you. So give us a call, 214-310-0008 for the Tajramani Home Sun team. We'll have David or Jeremy or one of our other full-time, fully dedicated, world-class real estate experts just begin that conversation with you over the phone, over Zoom, in the office, have a Coke or a cup of coffee or a glass of water. Uh, we've got some ice cold Topo Chico in the office. Uh, and just literally say, what's the dream? Is the dream to be on a golf course? Is the dream to be in a condo? Is the dream to downsize? Is the dream a bigger home? Is it more land? Is it animals? Is it recreation? Is it a home gym? Is it a pool? What is the thing related to your home that will allow you to live the life that you feel created to live, that you feel purposed to live, that you feel excited to live? Now, right now, DFW Real Estate 2023 Here comes your big butt segment, Courtney. She loves it when we do this, folks. It's become very popular, the big butt segment. The market is slower. Total market activity is down compared to the last, you know, five, six, seven years. But the big butt here is the market is slower, but it is still really competitive for the best houses, for the best situations. So if what you're after is something that is commonly attractive to people, if you're looking for a three or four bedroom house in West Richardson, if you're looking for a three, four bedroom house in Alito or Benbrook, if you're looking for almost any house in Frisco, um, it is still a highly competitive market, even though fewer homes as a whole are selling right now. We have very low inventory and solid buyer demand. Much, much, much of the buyer market right now has come to grips with interest rates where they are and understand that they're either going to be here for a good while or begin to maybe make their way down in the next year or two. Therefore, buyers are taking advantage of fewer competing buyers and somewhat less confident sellers. If you're thinking about buying or selling right now, 
We would love to help you with that. We'd love to earn your business if you are a right fit for us. If you're not, we'll point you towards someone that can help you. And if we are a right fit for you, we will make every effort to earn your trust. And then if it's a fit to earn your business. So the market is slower, but it is also highly competitive for great houses. Now, if you're looking for something that's not so uh, commonly in demand, then we have some massive opportunities for buyers right now with unique homes, homes in different situations. In some areas, that does apply to homes on land. In others, it is highly, highly competitive. So I have been asked and I have said I will uh, to talk a little bit about the emotional journey of finding, figuring out, and then acquiring your dream home. So let me go to Mason and then I'll give you my aspect on that. What's how has it literally felt, Mason, to go from living someplace that's more than you need, more than adequate, that you you remodeled even, but to go to the dream scenario? What have been the emotional ups or downs or both? Whatever you want to share. But the question is about sort of the toll it takes or the joy that it brings, the emotional journey of finding and owning your dream home. Man, yeah, it was impressed on me the other day. Someone said that, um, you know, if, if God's going to open a door, then uh, a lot of people think, oh, it's going to be smooth sailing, super easy. E you know, everything's going to be super easy going. And that has just not, not been in my experience whatsoever. And I don't say that to be a downer. I say that because hard things are worth doing. And it's, it's brought my family so much joy. Um, to put in the hard work, to work diligently every day, and to uh, feel like we're a part of something bigger than ourselves. Um, not only, you know, just working for ourselves, but working for our family, working for our future, working for other families um, to have, you know, food that they feel good about feeding their families. It, it's been some of the hardest work I've ever done in my entire life, um, but it's been some of the most fulfilling, worthwhile at the same time and I can I can look back you know at the end of my day breathe out a sigh of relief you know that the hard work is done for the day but just feel so good about the accomplishment um, and I think that just it, not only with work on the farm but just work towards our dream situation like you're talking about um, all of that kind of is a culmination of uh, there may be like I'm, I'm almost planting trees that won't be uh, harvested from like I won't see the fruit of that harvest down the line just because it's, it is such a long-term project. Um, but it's something that I, I feel good about leaving my, leaving a legacy that my family will be um, cared for, loved, have a place they can. It, it's something that I just, I, I relish in and I'm so glad I got this opportunity to do that. So in summary, highs and lows, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. when you have, look, when you're like, Hey, any three bedroom, two bath house will do. There's not quite the roller coaster of emotions. It's like, well, we missed that one. We'll get another one. Well, we got that one. I don't know that I love it, but it'll do when you have a dream, literally when you feel compelled, drawn, maybe even like created to do something, then with that comes emotion. I tell our team members all the time, when you do work that matters, you can't leave it at the office right? A, a, a legitimate pastor, surgeon, real estate agent, attorney that cares for people and works hard on things that matter, that things that have consequences. You don't just flip that switch and watch a ball game and have no emotional attachment to the outcomes of your work. This is that. When you're, when you're pursuing a home out of a sense of purpose, out of a sense of calling, out of a sense of literally a dream in your head and your heart, there are highs and lows. Everything seems to take longer. And then occasionally something just falls into place and it's faster than you thought. Those are some of the highest highs and lowest lows, like the reality versus the, the expectation, right? So if you're listening right now and you have a dream and you've been hiding it out of fear of the lows, stop, stop holding back. Let's figure out how to achieve the highs too. There, there comes both there, there are, there's a season for all of these things, but let's, be, let's have the conversation and let's start to flesh that out and put a timetable together and start checking boxes and learning and eliminating some of the negatives and narrowing in the field 
of perspective there so that we can help you experience the highs with the lows. But let's get to the highs. By the way, it's hard not to achieve achieve your dreams also. I'll say that again. It is hard not to achieve your dreams also. So let's not avoid the potential delays of your dream home, your dream family, your dream living situation, simply because it's going to be hard or it might take time. It's a risk worth taking. I certainly think so. Uh, and, and in so many ways, there is no destination either, right? It's always a developing, uh, rebuilding, reimagining of the next layer of the dream and the setbacks and the delays and all these things. So life is a journey. Okay. Um, we've got in our impact zone today, um, that was our impact zone. We're talking about the emotional journey of finding your dream home, but we also want to talk. We've been, we've been covering a chapter or a segment of a book I wrote years ago, every week now for quite a while. The book is the five lies that will ruin your real estate career and the truth that can make you wealthy. And I wrote this for real estate agents, but there are tons of takeaways for uh, friends, neighbors, and, and, and clients as well. And really quickly today, number 10 on the 12 truths is communicate directly in quick summary, our world is full of really bad communication, indirect fear of saying hard things. Just don't do that. The chapter really gets into kind of a hierarchy of communication where face to face is best and phone is next. Unfortunately, we live in a world where many, many people are deeply relying on text and email or social media in place of clear, direct communication. So I don't care if you're buying a house, selling a house, getting a job having a hard conversation with kids, spouses, or a friend or a romantic partner, focus on high quality, direct, clear communication. And many, many, many good things are happening. We are recruiting, by the way. We're looking for some new people to join our team in our Fort Worth office and our Richardson office. So if you're a fan of direct, quality, expert communication, you want to learn and grow and serve your friends, family, and neighbors, Go to the Todd, go to toddtremonteteam.com. You can click on the careers tab and man, would we love to partner with you either on our team or point you in the direction of somebody else. If you don't know what your home is worth or your farm, go to toddtremonteteam.com. You can click the home valuation tab and there's tons of value there. Thanks for hanging out with us. Farmer Mason. You got it. Yeah. Come visit us at the Tyler farmers market, or uh, if you want to keep following our journey on YouTube or email, sunnywillowfarms.com we'll have all sorts of updates with pork and chicken and beef and eggs and every kind of kind of meat that's a uh, high quality delicious and and worth feeding your family sweet how about that folks we'll see you next week take care